Mina, Code Banwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Here is the actual Sunday long message. Here's the extended version. Um, I gave you, well, it's not an extended version, it's just, uh, <laughs> I'm not continuing what I spoke on in the previous message from Saturday, the short message, short of seven minutes. Ugh, jeez. But this is a part three of sorts. That's Psalm. It's Psalm 18 to be specific, and it's recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 22. I want to keep on going with this psalm because I really, I don't know, I really like covering it. It's just like, it's a joy to my heart. It's like water going through and traversing my soul as I read it and as I talk about it and teach on it. And I want to just keep on going. I don't know how many more parts it's going to take because I didn't be long-winded and rambly. But I wanted to go ahead and continue covering 2 Samuel chapter 22, which is a retake or a first take uh, of Psalm 18, however that works. And I'm going to, I read verse 31 last time. I wanted to say it again because I didn't really cover it very much. So even though I said it, I'm going to say it again and elaborate a little bit more on it because I think there's a little bit of something I can pull out of verse 31. So 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. And, of course, I, I amen to everything the Bible has to say, even the parts I don't quite get or understand yet. As for God, his way is perfect. When the Lord does something, he does it right. And he doesn't just do it right, he does it perfectly. There's not a problem or a mistake with what he does. When there is a mistake, when there's a problem, I, I can bet you 10 times out of 10, it's something that we've done, it's something we've said, we've thought, we've acted upon. The mistake and the fault does not lie with God. Even the little um, like typographical errors that I've pointed out a few times, or I don't think I've pointed out any, but that I've mentioned that the Bible does have, I'm acknowledging that there are mistakes in the Word of God. Those typos do come from men. Someone misrecorded something. It was late at night. Many verses had been written. The candlelight was growing dim. Maybe the guy's eyes were growing dim in his old age. And a mistake was made. And that would not be God's fault. Now, I'm treading on very thin, I'm treading on thin ice here. I'm treading on very slippery territory. And the reason I'm doing this is to be completely honest with you guys. I've said so many times, and I will continue to say, that I want this channel to be a place of truth, a place of honesty. And if I want it to be those two things, truth and honesty, which are they're basically synonyms of each other, then I've got to be completely honest with you guys. And the honest truth is, is I've read the scriptures and as I've studied them, and as it is abundantly obvious by any Bible with footnotes at the bottom, there are questions. There are different texts with different things written down. There are some very obvious mistakes when you read the text, be it as simple as, uh, as a, a name written in two or three different ways, or be it as complex as it's saying Saul began reigning when he was one year old, or after he had reigned for one year in Israel. And I covered that in a previous message, and by all means, look it up for yourself. Google is your friend. Mistakes that can be cleared up with just the faintest little bit of research, or even more simply than that, they're clearly typographical errors. I've got to acknowledge that they're there. If I don't acknowledge that they're there, I feel like I've done my viewers, my channel, and I'd go so far as to say the church and the world as a whole a disservice. If I ignore that which is blindly evident, then not only have I done you a disservice, I've lied to you. If I know it's there and I don't point it out, that's a lie for me to you. And I don't want to do that to you guys. So while those things are pretty obvious and pretty evident, there are deeper issues, things that I want to cover in the future, things that I hope, I'm hoping at some point, like some non-believers will come to this channel and have specific questions. It'll give me a chance to bring forth the knowledge that I have, and it'll give me a chance to dig deeper into things that I do not know. But a lot of the supposed biblical contradictions and problems they really are supposed. All you've got to do is look at some other scripture or look at the context or even look at the words itself and it's an obvious, you know, that's a typo. 
you know, if you exchange this letter for another one or if you add in a letter or two, it's pretty obvious what the text is saying. And those are not big problems. The bi there are some bigger problems and I want to tackle those as well. And hopefully we'll do so at a future date um, through the comments that are left by you guys, by my freaks the subscribers and by the non-subscribers just someone passing through maybe even a critic maybe even a hater but even haters can say something other than you stink i don't like you they can say well guess what your god's not so great because of points a b and c and i look forward to the col um to the co not well to the collective but also to the constructive criticism i look forward to those times but when god authored the word of god when god spoke to his people we can misinterpret it. We can record it incorrectly. We can mess up the memory of it. But when God did what he did, he did it absolutely perfectly. We're the ones who messed that up. And speaking of interpretation, I'd like to add that, yeah, the Bible does have some typos, but a lot of the teachings out there that are bad, a lot of the Christians that act bad, that's our fault, guys. To any non-Christian who's watched this six minutes in and has given me six minutes of their time, one, thank you so much. Two, we Christians, we're the ones at fault. God didn't mess up. We did. The church did. We're at fault. We made the mistake. And if I may, on behalf of the believers in the body of Christ, on behalf of the church in general, and also for me, I've made my fair share of mistakes. And just, I think the fact that I have to put out four videos in one day, two video game videos and two sermon videos in one day, because I stayed up so late Saturday. Yeah, I can do what I want on my YouTube channel, but it's a bit of a disservice to you guys. I want to, and I'm going to make some obvious mistakes even more so in the future, just because I know myself, I'm a human, and I do those. I make mistakes. And I'm probably going to, take back some of the things I've said at some point in the future. Um, I'm probably going to say, you know that thing I said earlier? I kind of messed that up. I shouldn't have done that. Whether it's in a video game video or probably, more than likely, a few preaching videos. I'm gonna, I do my best to study to show myself approved, but as a human who changes his mind, as a human who changes, hopefully for the better, I'm going to make mistakes. And so right now, I'm here in the, it'll be in the past um, at some point, It'll, this will be, I'll say something in the future. So I'm saying it right now in the past. I apologize for the mistakes that I have made and will make because I'm going to do them. Please don't hold that as a fault of Christianity or hold that as a fault of God or the Word of God. Um, when I say something, please hold me accountable for that. Please don't hold God guilty of something that I, a pitiful little finite human, have done in his finite sinfulness. Please hold me accountable for those mistakes. And please hold, I'm listening to this very carefully, please hold the authors of the Word of God, the humans responsible for those typos, and not God himself responsible for those mistakes. Because as for God his way is perfect, and the word of the Lord is proven. And what a lot of the atheists won't tell you is the Bible gets a lot right. Historically, prophetically, archaeologically, paleontologically, the Bible gets a lot right. The Bible gets some, just like, let's just say for the fact that David is the king. David was the king of Israel. There are other extra-biblical sources that will speak of David's kinghood, kingship, whatever the proper word there, his dynasty, his ruling. He's not just some his mythical figure. He is a historical figure. Just to give one clear-cut example, the Bible got that right. So, yeah, the word of the Lord is proven. It's good. Are there mistakes? Yeah. But man made those mistakes. The authors, the, the, the people who, the scribes who kept transmitting this through the thousands of years, they made mistakes here and there. God's not responsible for that. If you want to ask why did he not preserve his word better, why isn't it absolutely pristine and perfect, I think it's great that, this is, might sound a little bit weird, but hear me out, I think it's great that there are a few mistakes. If you compare the word of God with uh, uh, another scripture like the Quran, where there's only one copy transmitted through over a thousand years? 
Well, as it turns out, the Quran was edited and compiled by one man. So we have to trust that that one man got absolutely everything right and made no mistakes. And what we have from him is genuine and came from Muhammad. Whereas the Bible, we don't have a specific list of authors. We have several different versions. With several different versions, you can compare the translations. You can correlate your facts and your texts. You don't have to trust that just one person got all 66 books of these right and compiled them all correctly together. We have several different manuscripts and several different texts that we can compare and look over. And yes, there are mistakes. Yes, there are errors. But by looking over all the texts and looking over all the mistakes, with some study, with some effort on our part, we can determine pretty accurately what is the Word of God and what is not. What are the mistakes and what is not. With a little bit of common sense and with people who are willing to look into the original Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek languages which the Bible came from, we have a text which I will say on camera for the world to see is more solid than the Quran, than the text of Islam. I believe that we have a sure way and a better way. We have multiple texts that we can compare and not just trusting one man over a thousand years ago to have compiled and edited everything correctly. It's good to have multiple source documents. That is a better way because we all know that men make mistakes, right? We know that man is fallible. Isn't it better to see the mistakes and see the fallacies than to just hope that one person got it right? So that is one, that is one proof for the Word of God. And I will add to that it is one proof against the Quran and against Islam, which I, I do not believe is the proper religion. I don't believe any religion is the proper religion except for Christianity. Even Judaism was a pathway to Christianity. It was the beginning not the end. It was a road to Jesus Christ. And to any Jewish listener who is listening to this, hopefully I didn't offend you too terribly. I'm simply trying to express my view, what I believe and have found to be true. And I hope you will give me some time and consideration as to what I've said. If, if you've listened this far, I'm guessing you're giving me some of your time and your consideration. And once again for that, I thank you very much. And to my Muslim friends, I am not trying to bash your religion. I'm not trying to bash you personally. I am trying to say I think you guys have got it wrong. I think there's a better way. And I hope hopefully you will take that that fact that I just gave because what I just said that's that's fact. What the Bible's history as as opposed to the Quran's history to the best of my knowledge and from what I've studied that is factual history of the recorded text of both of these books. If you want to present evidence saying something to the contrary, I'm absolutely open to that. But I'm, I'm presenting historical evidence and my belief and my interpretation based on those historical evidences. So please take that for what you will. And by all means, leave constructive criticism. Something beyond you stink and you're wrong. You, you say, leave something like you're wrong and here's why down in the comments below. That would be greatly appreciated and would give me something to study and look into in the future. I spend quite a bit of time on, on half or two-thirds of one verse, so this will probably go into a four-part series or maybe a five or six or a seven-part series. Who knows? I just want to keep going because I'm loving this scripture and I'm loving this text and I'm loving the things that I'm able to pull out of just one psalm. One psalm is pulling all of this out of me. It's not really surprising that this one book or this compilation of 66 books, or your mileage may vary, depend, like 1st and 2nd Samuel was originally one book, 1st and 2nd Kings was originally one book, so your mileage may vary. But for just for the generic stating of the fact, these 66 books, it's not surprising that over 2,000 years, so many messages have been compiled, and so many people can get so many different things from this one book. I'm just reading this one chapter, verse by verse, and so much I'm able to pull from this. That wasn't the best grammar, but there is so much I've been able to pull from just this one psalm and this one chapter of the Word of God. It's not surprising that so many people have pulled so much inspiration 
and so much hope and so much truth from this one book, which is a compilation of 66 throughout all of history. And finally, from verse 31, he is a shield to all who trust in him. And indeed, the word of God, it guards my heart, it guards my mind. Yeah, I have to put some study into it. Yeah, I have to look through some things, including some scribal errors to get to that truth. But once I have that truth, it is a strong shield. Picture like a, um, what the Romans used back in the time of the New Testament, that the Roman phalanx used, a shield that was like full body. If a man, you know, not gets on his knees but just ducks down a little bit, that shield covers him from the crown of his head to the tip of his toes. It's a full body shield and a reliable, trustworthy one. And that's the kind of shield that God himself is and that the war I will add to that. The word of God is to those who trust in him. And of course, God himself, completely able and capable of protecting his people under all circumstances. You look at Elijah, who in the three years of famine, birds delivered his food to him. And when the, and when the birds um, started disappearing, you know, God directed him to a nearby widow, and then he and the widow and her son were provided for miraculously during the famine that was going throughout Israel at that time. And then we look at Jesus, who multiple times said something controversial, and the people wanted to push him off a cliff, and Jesus just passed through the clouds because, the, as the Bible records, his time had not yet come. God definitely protects those who trust in him, miraculously if need be. Finally, moving on to verse 32. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except Yahweh or except our God? Yeah, actually, for I actually said that incorrectly. Um, the For who is God except the Lord? You'll notice that in pretty much all Bibles, the, the word Lord is in all caps. And that's a big fancy word known as the Tetragrammaton, which is the proper Old Testament name of God. So strictly speaking, it would be for who is God except Yahweh and who is a rock? except our God. And that is focusing on something I talked about a little bit earlier, the one true God, the one specific God, the Jewish God, Yahweh. Who is God except Yahweh? It's, it's, not, it's not Buddha. It's not Shiva or Krishna or Brahman or any of the Hindu gods. It's not, it's not Allah, the Muslim God. It's not Amaterasu or Susano or any of the Shinto gods. It's not any other god mentioned under the sun. There is Yahweh alone. Yahweh alone, who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of Christianity. And who is a rock except our God? Again, very specific. Our God is God, and our God is the rock. And that goes all the way back to uh, the beginning of this psalm, our shield the horn of our salvation, our rock, our fortress, our deliverer. That goes back to 2 Samuel chapter 22, um, verses 2 and 3. Who is a God except Yahweh? Who is a rock except our God? And the answer to that, let me just answer both of those questions. No one, only He is God. And he is our definitive rock and our definitive refuge in times of trouble. Verse 33, God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. Not only does is he defend, he gives offensive power. So when we need to fight the enemy, God is there. If you read the story of Elisha, he's surrounded by hundreds of troops. And his servant is like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? We're doomed. And he said, there are more with us than there are against us. And then he said, Lord, open the eyes of my servant. And then he saw the hills around them covered in, God, in God's troops. It's supernatural. It is divine. It requires faith to really believe in it. And of course, it requires faith to believe that God even exists. But for those who do believe, he is a source of strength and power, not just a rock, but also a spear and a sword able to strike down all the works of the enemy. 
And just as God himself is perfect and his way is perfect, he makes my way perfect. If we will let God, he will direct us. He will show us his way, primarily through his word and through the word of God. I want to put that on camera and show it to you guys for a minute. He makes our way perfect. He will direct us in the way that is right and that is perfect. Verse 34, he makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. With God, we can, he's not only an offensive and a defensive power, he's a power of speed and a, and a power of quickness. He sets us and also he makes our path sure. Like where we step, not only does there is speed granted to us, but a sure path and a light to our path is also given to us. So we know not only the perfect way, we know how to walk on that way. We know how to be set on that way. We're fast, we're sure, and we're set in place. We're established. We know for certain that the path we're walking on is certain and sure, and we can continue to walk on that path. And when we do make mistakes, let me just throw this in. When we do make mistakes, like I just said, I will make mistakes at some point in the future. I trust that my God, again, I'm wrong. He's right. And he will establish my path. He'll make it right. When I get something wrong, he will correct me. And he will show me, hey, Brandon, you messed that up. Here's the correct path to your left or to your right, or you might have to back up a few steps. Here you go, let me put you on the right path. Let me set your, let me set your feet straight. God is perfectly capable of doing that. And he makes my feet like the feet of a deer and he sets me on high places. He makes my path sure and he makes my path quick. And he teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. I'm assuming a bow of bronze is probably very hard to bend and that it requires a lot of strength. And he teaches us to fight. And that's what I'm, one of the things I'm doing on YouTube. I'm fighting for the way that I believe to be right. I'm fighting for the truth of the Lord. I'm fighting for the truth of the scriptures of God. I'm fighting and he's teaching me. All, all along the way, he's teaching me how to make war on the works of the enemy and on the false beliefs and false religions of the enemy. God's establishing me. And I believe that I've, over my years of study, I believe I've gotten quite a few things right. But the things that I've gotten wrong, I believe that the Lord will straighten out and he will correct and he will make right and he will make sure and he will make prosper. Even to the point of being able to do things that require a great deal of strength, like bending a bow of bronze, God will prepare me and equip me to do that correctly and rightly. And I can't wait to see what the Lord does with me in the future. And to elaborate just a little bit more on that, verse 36 and 37, You've also given me the shield of your salvation. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me, so my feet did not slip. Basically, I kind of, I didn't, I honestly did not read those verses in advance. I just kind of spoke what was flowing from my heart. And the next few verses kind of just enforced that and strengthened those analogies. It kind of gave a little bit more footing to the things that I just said. And his gentleness has made me great. Gentleness, something I'm not sometimes very good at, something I need to work on. But the Lord is very gentle with us, whereas we are sinners and we're deserving of judgment and wrath. He's gentle and merciful with us. And that gentleness makes us great. So on verses 36 and 37, I will end the bulk of the message there. And more stuff to pick up on next time. His gentleness has made us great. Reopen it real quick. His gentleness has made us great, and he's enlarged our path so our feet did not slip. He has given us a gentleness we don't deserve, and he's made it so our feet don't have to stumble or slip along a crooked and uncertain path. And guys, that mercy and that sure path is Jesus Christ. If you've made it this far in the message, thank you so much. I want to wrap this up as I always do with an invitation to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He's the sure path. 
He's the shield. He's the truth. He's the strength that gives us the strength to bend bows of bronze. He's the path where our feet are sure, our path is established, and our foot doesn't stumble or trip up. Jesus died for all of us on the cross. He shed his blood so our sins could be forgiven. And he rose again three days later to guarantee eternal life. Won't you accept him as your Lord and Savior today? If you've listened this, this long, thank you so much. If you don't believe what I've said, not a problem at all. By all means, leave some constructive criticism in the comments down below. Something for me to review, something for me to look over. And for those of you who are feeling a tugging on your heart, and this message, is this has been the clincher. This is the thing where it's like, you know what? I really want to believe in God, and I want to believe in Jesus. You can do that right now if you'll just believe in and give voice to the things that I just said. And if you want a model prayer to follow, something more, I guess, established, something more, it's not your words, but just words you can follow, pray this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I need your gentleness, your mercy, your cross, and your blood, which you shed for me. And I believe you did die on the cross for me, shedding your blood so that all my sins, all my wrongdoings can be forgiven. And I believe that you rose again three days later to guarantee me eternal life in heaven with you, and that you will forgive all my sins right now as I ask you to, and that you'll be my Lord, my God, and my Savior right now as I ask you to. So thank you, Jesus, for hearing this prayer. You're awesome, amazing, and good. Amen. And if you just prayed that prayer, welcome to the Christian family. It is good to have you. And I, I, that, that's the biggest hope and the biggest dream. And the biggest thing I think of as successful on my channel, that someone will hear these messages and will commit their lives to Jesus Christ. That is so awesome if you did that by listening to this message. If I may encourage you, get a Bible, study it, read it for yourself just a little bit every day. You want to hear the voice of God, you want to get to know the God that you just believed in more, reading the Bible is the surest. So I'm pointing out the Bible, that's what I'm pointing at right now, just so you can see it. That's what I'm kind of alluding to as I'm pointing off here in the corner. That's the surest way to get to know Him, to hear His voice, and to begin this walk and this journey with the God you've entrusted with your very soul and spirit. And also pray just a little bit to him every day. When things are going wrong, when things are going bad, just a quick, Daddy, I'm in trouble, help. That's a prayer. And if you want to pray for your friends and for other things of your life, please do. It's probably the leading of the Holy Spirit that is leading you to do those things. The Holy Spirit that is now living inside you, which is the promise of God that you are his kid and that he's with you, and that he'll never leave or forsake you. And also, another encouragement, if you could find a little bit of Christian music, a little bit of praise and worship music to just tell God how good he is and how thankful you are for the things that he's doing in your life. And so, some, so, some songs are actually prayers. Some songs are really more or less prayers for help and for guidance. And there's not a very big difference between prayer and praise and worship. It's a very thin line that separates the three. They're, I would dare say they're all most anonymous. So get involved in some of that. It'll really help your life. It'll also lead you onto paths of healing and paths of renewal and paths of repentance, things that the Lord wants to fine-tune and change in your life. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And for those of you who accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that is awesome. Welcome to the family. You don't have to subscribe to my channel. You don't even have to like me that much. But if what I've said has convinced you that Jesus is Lord, and really it was the Holy Spirit that convinced you and not me, that is so awesome. Let me know in the comments if you did accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That will greatly encourage me and greatly encourage others who need to make that most important step in their lives. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.